Right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny, and I'm going to be presenting on events in Node. Um, I was really curious about this topic because uh, when we were learning about Node, we learned about the event loop, we learned about the event emitter, event listeners, and I'm pretty confident in how to use them, but I didn't understand how any of them worked. Um, just I had no idea what was going on. It seems like um, weird magic that something was like listening um, for another event. So uh, today I'm going to cover what are events in Node, um, the built-in module that is the event emitter class in Node, and then some applications. Um, trying to keep it simple, but I just want mostly to get an in-depth look at some of you know, what's going on behind the scenes. And it's really important because a lot of Node.js actually depends on this feature, which is um, the events. So uh, what is an event? We can think of an event as something that has happened in our app that we can respond to. So this could be a click. Um, it could be some message that some other program sends. It could be various things. Um, and obviously, this is not limited to Node. It's present in a lot of different system architecture. So Node.js says of itself, that's not right, that it's a JavaScript runtime built on V8 engine, and it's an event-driven model. Uh, so to unpack this a little bit, um, what it means uh, when it's that it's built on the V8 engine is that it borrows that C++ code because that engine is written in C++, but it adds more modules to it so that when you're um, typing in Node, you don't just have the ECMAScript JavaScript available to you. You can also have other features. So those are things like export, require, um, being able to read files off the file system. That's something that is added using C++ modules. And Event-driven programming just means that um, everything, um, all the applications are waiting for events. Um, that's how it's going to run. And so actually in Node, we work with two different kinds of events. And this is most of the time muddled. Um, we talk about it as if there's one general event. But there's actually uh, one category, which is the system event. These are low-level events um, that are things like um, a file is ready to be read, something like that. That can't be captured by JavaScript because it's high level. Um, but the C++ core of Node.js can identify this and react to it using co code. And on the other end, we have custom events. Um, these are done through JavaScript. These don't have to do anything with user actions or programs at all. You can just define it and write it in your JavaScript code. Um, so to go into more detail, um, the C++ core, there's a little library called libuv that'll take care of it. And like I said, there are low-level events that are closer to the machine that are like, um, I received data from the internet. Then libuv will take care of this and put it on the event loop. So this is the part that's, um, these are the events that are the event loop part um, that make Node.js asynchronous. And I can't really go into more detail here. Um, but yeah, it's, it would be really helpful for you to learn to understand what's going on with the system events and the event loop to really understand how to handle asynchronicity in Node. So on the other end, in JavaScript core, what's handling it is not libuv, but we have just an event emitter class. And this. Uh, the event emitter class also provides um, code to like wrap the system events in. So even though these are low level and you can only, um, JavaScript usually wouldn't be able to deal with them, it can react to them because um, you'll wrap whatever system event is happening with the event emitter and then you can handle it in JavaScript. Um, so in a way, these custom events are not real events. Um, because it's really just a class or a constructor function. I think we saw this before in a Reacto problem. And I can also show you just an example. 
Mm. How can I get this to show? Like this? Is that visible? Uh, so here I just wrote an event emitter that's really basic. It has three uh, methods on it, which are on, emit, and remove. And if I were to, oh, this. I have this app that requires in that event emitter, and it does a simple thing like put two greet events on it with two functions. And then when I console log out hello, I want um, that greet event to happen. I'll go ahead and run that. And what I see is hello. And then these are the two um, functions, the callbacks, that I put on that greet event. And let's see. But there's no really, there's really no need for me to make my own event emitter because it's built in into Node. So I don't need this at all. I could actually just um, require in the module which would be this, I think it's called events. And if I try to run this, the same thing should happen. Mm. And you see, the same thing happens. Um, and actually, you know, I would never, we would never want to write another event emitter because the one node provides has so many more features, it prevents errors, things like that. Um, it's, okay. Yeah, that's that. Um, it, it's really great that we can borrow and require in the event emitter, but um, what would, sorry, I can't find my Chrome window. Hmm, I can't find my speaker window. Okay, got it. Okay, sorry. Now, what would be really great is that um, we can inherit from this event emitter class and define our own classes that have the, have the methods on the event emitter, but also add to them. And that's something that Node actually does um, on its own. So before I reference that, a lot of Node is built on this. So for example, um, the HTTP module, when you're trying to start a server, if you use um, HTTP dot on, it's because that works because um, it inherits that method from the event emitter, emitter class. And the same thing happens when you're trying to read a stream. So in this example here, you have readable dot on, and that's because the stream inherits from the event emitter class. And I can show you that. So if you were to download the source code for Node.js, you could see um, in this folder that you have the stream inherits from event emitter, which is required in here. And then the constructor for the event emitter is called whenever you're making the stream. So that's on line 23 and up on line 8. So that's how that's happening. So ev everything that's on the event emitter prototype will be on the stream prototype. So. Now that we know a bit more about events, why would we want to like focus on them and use them? Well, in Node, events are an alternative to using all these different callbacks. Because there's so many asynchronous events in Node, um, if you use events, then you can organize your code without having to keep nesting those in. And another reason is because um, you can link different parts of your code together without it being tangled up. So you can have um, an, an event being emitted and there's no listeners, but that's not going to throw an error. And in the same way, you can remove all the listeners and that's not going to throw an error either. So you don't have to debug through your code. Uh, for this reason, a lot of the practical use cases for event emitters are things that follow the pub, pub sub pattern, publisher, subscriber. So you can set up things like Twitter streams or weather networks. And to give one example, 
I could track web, live web analytics. So if anyone who has a computer, you can visit this website, which is colago-analytics.herokuapp.com. And I'll go there myself. So when you all visit the website, I'll be able to see in real time any analytics information about the users that are on the website. Are you people, are you visiting? I have one visitor. <laughs> I can see where you're coming from. I can see which actual page has how many users on it. And it's just updating constantly, even though I'm not refreshing. Right. Mm. So that's it for my presentation. Here are more resources if you want to learn more about event emitters and the event loop. And thank you for your time. <laughs>